Well, listen, folks, there's going to be a lot more chit-chat about the industry and some of the latest news out there. But before we go any further, we have in the studio right now, we've got Virginia Pierce. I am really looking forward to hear from Virginia. I want to welcome you to the show, Virginia. Thanks for having me. <laughs> okay, that's great. That's great. So here you are, film. What, what, okay, to be clear, what is it? Are you the director of the film commission? Are you film? Co is there any difference at all? There it really isn't a difference. I, I mean, it depends on how you say it. I like the commissioner just because, you know, it has a nice ring to it. That's right. <laughs> and don't you expect someone to salute when they say commission? Yeah, the commish. It's good. <laughs> hey, listen, I love that. It's been... It's been an interesting, when you think back on uh, the history of the Utah film industry, pretty amazing. You're stepping into some really amazing shoes. I had the opportunity, of course, to get to know Lee Vonderish over the mm -hmm. years. She was here, I don't know, for at least 30 years. The first time I remember mm -hmm. meeting her was in Cannes, in the south of France, at the Cannes Film Festival. I think it was like 1990. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think she was, with between film and tourism, I think she was there for little over 20 years so she had a huge impact on the film industry for sure well you know you're you've got a lot going on it's really a, a pretty exciting time to be stepping in yeah it's been a big year has it yeah you've been you've been in just a little bit over a year I think I remember meeting you at Sundance not last year but the year before yeah yeah it's been I started just a little over a year ago and yeah it's been an exciting year we've had over 35 projects film in Utah this year, mm. another nine are in pre-production, and um, it just looks to get even busier. It's fun stuff. Of course, the film industry itself is, is always exciting. You've got an, a fun opportunity to rub shoulders with <laughs> some pretty interesting people, of course. Yes. What would you say is your biggest challenge, one of your biggest goals right now as you step into it as film commissioner? Um, I think, you know, we are always looking for ways to grow the film industry, both locally and what's happening, you know, with, with films coming in to shoot here. And it's just getting our story out there. I think a lot of filmmakers don't think about Utah and don't know what Utah has to offer. And Sundance is a great way that we're taking advantage of that and using that as a platform to talk to the hundreds of, of really talented filmmakers that come in. Absolutely. Of course, it's been a great window both directions for Hollywood into Utah, mm -hmm. but from Utah into Hollywood. Yeah. It's been an interesting relationship over the last 33 years. I remember being here actually the very first year of Sundance. Oh, great. I think, it, and actually before it was Sundance when. And it was the U.S. Film Festival. It was the U.S. Film mm -hmm. Festival. Went there one year and then Mr. Redford mm -hmm. came on board and just mm -hmm. turned it into th the amazing thing that it is today yeah i know he has i mean talk about impact oh. on independent film and in hollywood in general it's really sundance the things that they've done in the last 30 years with the impact that you know independent film has on the box office and people want to be involved and make their films the way the way they want to make them it's just been impressive it really is and of course he is the hugest champion of quote-unquote independent mm -hmm. filmmaking i mean he really really understands it. He's been a mentor to so many people. What an incredible program. When you think of the people, the artists and the directors and the everybody who has gone through the Sundance yeah. family program, in a sense. Yeah, I mean, and a lot has happened right here in Utah, not only the festival, but the lab program that they run up at Sundance Resort and, and the filmmakers that have come through there and had the opportunity to be mentored by some amazing filmmakers and producers. And, you know, it's it's so cool to have that in our backyard. It really is. Now, you've been actually involved with Sundance for how many years? I was there from for a little over 12 years, almost 13 years. Wow. Yeah. So. Did you, uh, are, what was that journey like? Was it, did you, did you start uh, as a volunteer? I <laughs> wanted to start as a volunteer. That was my first, um, I, I was here for a winter and I thought I would volunteer. I'd always attended and they came back to me and said, do you want to volunteer or do you want to get paid? And so I, you know, <laughs> that seemed like a silly question. <laughs> <laughs> that was not a hard choice. <laughs> um, but I started out as the manager of the volunteer department. So I did that for a couple of years, which was such a great way to get to know the festival and all the people involved. And, and the volunteer program is one that sees 
filmmakers that start out as drivers and, and then later want to bring their film to the festival. I mean, there's even just last year, there was a documentary on the comedian Tig Notaro, and she started out as a volunteer no at the festival. So It's yeah. so fun. I mean, when you think about it, the festival has been around and a part of so many people's lives mm -hmm. and so much a part of our culture in Park City. It's really because of the festival that I live in Park City. I kept going year after year after year, and I think, you know what, this is a great place to live. I think I'm gonna move up here. Yeah, I think that happens to a lot of people. We've got a, we've got a commercial break we're gonna go to. We are here at KTalk Radio AM 630, live local two-way talk. We're here with the studio Guest Virginia Pierce, the Utah Film Commissioner. We're talking about Sundance. We're talking about the new studio coming up and the film industry in Utah. We will be right back in just a minute. Join us for the Utah Eagle Forum Convention, January 16th from 8.30 a.m. to 6 p.m., We've got speakers that include Tim Ballard, Glenn Wright, Senator Mike Lee, Governor Gary Herbert, Wendy Hart from the Alpine School Board, all three of your congressmen and one of your congresswomen, and the Utah State Representative, LeVar Christensen. You must register before January 14th at utaheagleforum.org. $39 for all day and includes lunch by Neater's Bakery and Cafe. Come to find out how you can help to preserve our constitutional freedoms. We'll be discussing data collecting, common core, constitutional issues, religious liberties, and Obamacare. We'll see you there, utaheagleforum.org, or call 801-756-8077. For more information, contact utaheagleforum.org or call 801-756-8077. That's 801-756-8077. We'll see you there. Are you living with old and ugly carpet? You want new carpet, but it's just too expensive, right? We know what you mean. Introducing $3 Carpet, the most affordable carpet solution on the planet from the exclusive trade show carpet reseller. Our beautiful carpet used for only two to three days is still just like brand new, but we sell it to you starting at only three bucks a yard. It normally sells for 10 to $12 a yard. You'll be blown away. Normally $12 a yard, now just three bucks. So don't live with that ugly carpet anymore. Call $3 Carpet. It's only three bucks a yard. That's 33 cents a foot. Most of our customers save up to 60%. In Draper, call now, 801-988-9733, $3carpet.com, 801-988-9733, $3carpet.com. Call today. Attention salespeople, $3 Carpet is currently hiring to help with our high demand. If you're looking for a great sales job with unique and exclusive products, we've got one. Call today, 801-988-9733. Hey, it's Mark Davis. Why is your mobile company anti-gun? Why is your cell phone bill going to help Hillary? What? Didn't know that was happening? It is. Big Mobile, including the company you probably use, contributes all over the spectrum. A little bit here, a little bit there, meaning your cell phone bill pretty well helped Obama get elected twice. Is there anything you can do about that? There sure is. Meet EOS Mobile at EOSCell.com, E-O-S-C-E-L-L.com. Same service, same phone selection, and they'll save you 10 to 15% versus what you're paying now, and their corporate contributions go only to conservative causes and conservative candidates. Check them out at EOSCell.com, E-O-S-C-E-L-L.com. And it's local folks who came up with this. Service you love, the phones you want, a better price, and the knowledge that none of your cell phone bill is going to Hillary. Worth it. They'll even buy you out of your current contract so you can switch today. Same service, same phones, better causes, EOS Cell, EOS Mobile, E-O-S-C-E-L-L.com. E-O-S-C-E-L-L dot com. And we are back. We're back. Usually we have a little bumper music there that plays, but this is the new year. <laughs> and we are... Uh, we are getting getting warmed up here. We are in the studio here at AM 630, K-Talk Radio, live local two-way talk. And we have a special guest with us right now, Virginia Pierce. She's Utah's film commissioner. She's been here now for a year, stepping into a, a very exciting time, I think, in, in the history of Utah. A lot going on. And we're talking about Sundance. 
Sundance is just around the corner. We have a new studio up there in Park City. Let's talk a little bit about that. And then Utah has an incentive program as Utah tries to compete in a very competitive marketplace. I know a few years ago in my consulting practice, I went all over the country and did feasibility studies and analysis for those contemplating putting together incentive programs. As a matter of fact, I was working with Utah at that time with Governor Huntsman as he was a great champion of the film industry. Yes, he was. Wasn't he? Yeah. And Governor Herbert is right there. Boy, he's right there with, uh, he's, he's showing some great leadership, isn't he? As yeah, far as economics. Yeah, yeah, no, he's been very supportive of the film program and he loves what Sundance brings and he can see that the film industry is a great part of the, the diversity of Utah's economy. Um, and I think that's what makes Utah so strong. And obviously we are very strong economically. We always get accolades um, for everything that we're doing here. And I think film is a part of that. You know, it's it, like I, I keep referring to this history. History is, is a big part of Utah. It just didn't, you know, just fall out of the air uh, in the early days. Uh, it was a great location for some of the early Westerns. You go down to southern Utah, Kanab. As a matter of fact, yeah, Little lives, Hollywood, Little yeah. Hollywood, right? Yeah. And the reason I know so much about that is because that's where my family's from. Oh, my dad grew up there. They had a hotel right there on Main Street. They catered the movie business and the <laughs> film companies that came to town. They acted in the shows as extras and little bit parts. That and is so, so great. It I is. Didn't and know I can't that. wait to go down there and make a movie, honestly. Yeah. I mean, the, what they've done down there and all of the history over 900 films have been shot in Utah. It all obviously all got its start in southern Utah and John Ford and all of the westerns yeah. and. Um, you know, Searchers and Stagecoach and some of those amazing films from, you know, the 30s and 40s, just a boom, a Western film boom that really started in Utah. Yeah, it really did. Mm -hmm. Very, very exciting. That town will never be the same. It's definitely not a typical Utah small town. No, I know. It's so great down there. I love it. But here we have Park City coming up here. So what's, uh, what do you think the strategy going forward is on how to, of course, Utah's got a great relationship, I think, with Sundance, and they're yeah. not going anywhere, are Yeah, they? no, Utah is the festival host state. We've been a sponsor of Sundance and a supporter, a big supporter for many, many years. And we really use it as a platform to reach both the audiences and the artists that come through Sundance. Um, in fact, Blood and Oil, which was the ABC Network series that was here earlier this year, they came to Utah during Sundance last year to see the film studio and, and tour around Utah a little bit, and that's how they decided to bring that show here. And I remember the studio wasn't quite finished yet. It was By, a little cold. Yeah, <laughs> the studio was not finished. That's true. I went on their little tour, but they did a great job. And, obviously, and I remember being yeah. a part of it. I know the folks that are involved in the development. And, of course, they've been talking about it for, I think, for at least a decade. Yeah, and, for sure. And suddenly it materialized. How exciting is that? Yeah, it's a great resource and a, a great asset for us to add to you know, the resources that we have for filmmakers that come here. It's the only purpose-built studio that we have in Utah, and it's gorgeous and state-of-the-art and really has is one of the reasons that ABC came here. It is really state-of-the-art. Um, I have spent a lot of time actually in the soundstage feasibility study mm -hmm. business. It's not as fun as making movies. Believe mm -hmm. me, when I came to Utah uh, just a few years ago and made Abandoned Mine, I, I wouldn't necessarily say it was fun shooting a mile inside one of Utah's mountains in an old, real abandoned mine. I don't know if you've heard any of the stories from that. Uh-uh, I haven't. Well, y y you've only been here a year. You might. <laughs> We're going to be hopefully shooting another one coming up. It's a family movie, as a matter of fact, called uh, Deputy Dog. And I, I'm curious as to when, when we were talking about the incentive program, which was originally designed to be to help make Utah more competitive right in a very competitive marketplace uh, is are there content uh, related issues that uh, that Utah uh, has I'm just wondering about the young filmmakers out there right um, well Utah's incentive program has been around for a, a just over five years and it's as you said it does help make Utah a little more competitive. 37 states offer some sort of incentive program and this is ours is a little unique in that it's a 
post-performance tax credit. So, um, you you know, filmmakers come in, they have to spend at least $200,000 in the state. They, they spend money locally on craft, on, you know, crew and vendors and services here, resources, equipment, and they submit an audit after they're done. And we're basically rewarding success. So that's the way the program is set up. We have, as far as where we are competitively, our cap is $6.79 million a year. That's what the, the bill allocates to us every year. And, um, you know, when you look at New Mexico, they're at 50 million and California is at 330 million. So, <laughs> you know, while we the the details around our program are competitive, the the con or the number is maybe on the lower end. But we've done some amazing things with the program. And since 2011, over one hundred and ninety five million dollars has been spent on film in Utah. And that's direct cost to local businesses and locals that are being hired to work on those films. I know originally a few years ago when we were putting the program together, trying to define it for the state and sell it to mm -hmm. the elected representatives, uh, there was obviously a debate. Is six million, I think maybe at the time it was may have been five million, three, mm -hmm. five, six. It's higher than it has been in the past, mm -hmm. right? Uh, it's been 6.79 since 2011, since we had our official program. Oh, okay, so. okay. Mm -hmm. So is the, it seems that there was a debate about, is this a good use of funds? Mm -hmm. it, you know, because we have education, we have, uh, we, we have, and I think it was mostly education, as I recall. Right. Is this a better use of funds, and how do you come back? Well, it doesn't. It's it's comparing it to education is comparing it to apples and oranges. So at the education fund and the the tax credit fund are are different, um, and so it's along the lines of the way the governor's office of economic development uses business incentives. So right. it's a similar program, and in Hollywood today, incentives are the name of the game. So if Utah wants to be in the film industry, we have to have some sort of incentive program. It's just the way that it works. Yeah, there's no question about it. The number one driver for the decision makers to go to any location in all of the studies that I performed was incentives. Mm -hmm. And yeah, Utah has some great vistas and national parks and gr all of that. But if it didn't have an incentive program, no, yeah. we'd be losing that business. I mean, I think I always look at there's three things that, that producers look at. There's it's cost, creativity, and convenience. So when you look at creativity, we have the gorgeous locations. We have, you know, all the different looks that you can get, the convenience of being 90-minute fri flight from L.A. We have resources here. We have equipment houses. We have a studio. We have over 1,600 qualified crew that can work on films here. And then the third thing is cost. So, you know, can you help the bottom line of my film production? And, and, you know, not all, depending on where your budget is, it may be a smaller, you know, cost may be the second in the list as opposed to creativity or convenience. But once you get into those bigger studio features or a television series, it is the name of the game. It is. When you get a director doing a location scout, you will not necessarily be looking at the numbers, but believe me, that next trip mm -hmm. by the producer, he's going is to about the, know numbers, the numbers. For sure. Right? Yeah. When, when you think of how well you're positioned, yeah, the, the fund is a little smaller than other, other states that are a little bit more aggressive. But one of the important things is risk. When you look at Hollywood productions, being able to get in and out of a shoot on any given day or any given uh, schedule, you want to be able to know you can meet your days and come in on budget. And the unknown risks a lot of times for film crews out of Hollywood is, is something certainly that they're concerned with. So the fact that Utah has a really good, strong infrastructure and crew base has got to be a, a, a positive. Yeah, I mean, I think I hear directors talk about that. And, you know, if their script changes and they need actors on Tuesday instead of Thursday, they can fly people in and out of L.A. in a day. And they're not, you know, that's an issue when you're shooting back east or in Georgia or Louisiana, some of the other bigger film production states where you're often a couple days out to get someone in. It is. There's no question. The, the time zone, just one time zone difference. It's an hour and a half flight. Mm -hmm. it, little things like that logistically uh, translate into big dollar savings mm -hmm. as well. For sure. What about right to work state? Right to work state definitely plays a part more for independent films and smaller budget films than than bigger. You know, a lot of studios are signatory to the unions and that's the way they work. And that works well here, too. We have a lot of crew that work both sides 
of the line, and and we've always had a great relationship with that. When you think about uh, when we're talking about studio versus independent, so what about that? Uh, it seemed early on that the major focus was in the discussion about putting together the incentive programs is go down and lure big studio, big budget films up here and have them spend the money. For me, my recommendation was don't ignore the indigenous creative community mm -hmm. and the folks that are even doing post-production and, uh, and really give them a reason to stay here and develop an infrastructure that people from all over the country can come here and take advantage of. What yeah. about that? Well, we have two parts of our program. One is the under a million dollar incentive program and one is the over a million. Mm -hmm. And they're, they are set up m in very similar ways, but the percentage of incentives are a little bit different. And the under a million dollar incentive is really meant for both independent films from out of state and our local industry. And without building up that local industry, you're right. I mean, we can't take advantage of the big studio films that come in because we don't have qualified crew. We don't have experience. You know, we need that on the ground production to get, you know, we're graduating over a thousand graduates a year from all of our different colleges with degrees in film and digital entertainment. So it's great to have that kind of pipeline. What about the relationship between the public private sectors with respect to the schools and the students and the injury? Is there, is there kind of a strategy to really take advantage of a, a very large uh, student community here that's interested in film and media? Well, and that's back to your question about, you know, what, am, what are my big challenges and what am I working on? That's a big one. Workforce development for me is key because there are there's so much talent coming out of our schools. BYU's animation pro program is Huge. obviously, you know, ranked nationally as well as University of Utah's game design program. And I want to develop a stronger tie f between the educational facilities and the industry, and that's mm -hmm. something that we're working on. We just ran our first um, production assistant boot camp mm -hmm. a few uh, months ago at Salt Lake Community College, another great resource that has a beautiful state-of-the-art yes. film production yeah. facility. And it was great, hugely successful. We're going to do more of those, working with the Motion Picture Association of Utah to mm -hmm. really start some, some training programs and to get direct experience with industry. So valuable. Of course, you didn't mention UVU, but they've got a great yes, program down right there. Uh -huh. I've used them myself. And they're doing my... such great technical work. I mean, really, yes. the students coming out of UVU's program are leaps and bounds they really are. ahead. They really are. And I filled mm -hmm. out my, my little low-budget film a few years ago with them. They did a fabulous job. And even on the creative side, mm -hmm. they have a great writer's program down there. Yep. And they're just cranking out some very well-qualified people that are talented, skilled craftsmen that can actually show up and get the job done. I was impressed. Great. That's yeah. great. So, so you've got this community uh, that is kind of uh, a pipeline and feeding mm -hmm. uh, young, young folks, interns. Uh, it can be a great source of internships, I think, yeah. on lower budget films especially. Yeah, and right? the producers, local producers, are so great about you know, giving us a call or working directly with the, the, the schools to find interns and new PAs and just getting people through because that's it. they rely on, you know, we all need to book build up our workforce. You know, I think uh, when you look at how the film focus and the film commission fits into tourism, which is the bigger mm -hmm. the bigger sector, isn't mm -hmm. it? Is that uh, Vicki Varela that, mm -hmm. that uh, manages yep. that? You work very closely with her? Yeah, yeah. And, and one of the big things I think Lee started this is that film is a billboard for the state. And, you know, when we do, when we are able to take advantage of these larger productions like Lone Ranger, John Carter of Mars... Thelma and Louise, right. Independence Day, you know, those are all films that have had High School Musical coming up on its 10th anniversary. Right. People are still visiting those places. That's kind of fun. From a tourism perspective, people want to see these locations, I mm -hmm. guess. W when, when, you th when you think of what uh, y your, your plans are for the future, is, is, there, is there anything, is there a message that you would like to deliver to the creative community, to the film community here in the state or even in Hollywood? Because I know you're going to be up there talking to a lot of people here in a couple of weeks. Uh, you've got usually the Utah film breakfast luncheon that goes yeah. on up there at Sundance. And then the governor has the governor's, uh, what do you call it? The, the governor's, governor's luncheon. 
um, the governor's lunch. summit. Summit. Or oh, during Sundance. During Sundance. Yes. Yeah. He does. He does do a luncheon as well. Um, I think the message is just you know it, it's welcome to Utah. You know, with pays to film in Utah, and it's a great place to be, and it's. Um, it has all the resources that you want. It's close. It's there's a lot of reasons to be based here. And how do you feel about being based here? <laughs> I love being based here. I left for a long time, and I couldn't be happier to be back. You grew up here, though, didn't you? I did. I grew up here. I went to high school here, and I left for college and left for about ten or fifteen years. And then, um, and so I think it, it puts me in a good position to be able to speak to educating people about why Utah because I have been I've left and now I'm back well we are happy you are back and you are definitely back in a big way we want to thank you for joining us here on K-Talk Radio AM 630 the Liberty lineup radio show and yes I'm the Hollywood Y guy here (laughs) and the wise guy too I want to I want to thank you for coming in I look forward to seeing you around the streets of Sundance coming up yeah thank you Thank you.